Rod. Today we are talking about things that matter to moms because, my gosh, we really need a place where we can voice our opinions. And I'm hanging out with a few friends of mine, Cynthia, Michelle, and Noemi, and all season long, we'll be talking about some hot subject matters. To start it off, right? Do you guys spank your kids? Well, Noemi, you're our mom to be, I'm right? I'm mom to be. Okay, so. Would but you I have lots of views on it. I know you do. <laughs> I mean, what do you think? I mean, for instance, you're in the grocery store, your kid says, F you, mom. What do you do? Right. You spank, is that okay for someone to spank their kids after that? No, I don't, I don't think so. I not, don't know not after about that. Not after that, no. I don't think. Is it, is it ever but, acceptable to spank your child? I think there are times that your kid gets really up in your face. I mean, there's spanking and there's abuse. Exactly. And that's, and that's two different things. To spank to, is not really abuse. I mean, abuse is one thing. But sometimes kids, you know, they get right up to you. I had that with my daughter mm. once. She got right up to me, and she was really fresh. And you know, so you get very frustrated. And I gave her a little, little I mean, slap. It's kind of like a, you and, know, like a, oh, you know, and, and you hold your hand yeah. there. I mean, what do you do? What's the line between spanking in an appropriate way and abuse? I, I personally think that um, spanking should be used sometimes. I, I personally don't use it all, all the time with my kids, but when they're really out of line, I, I do it in a way where it's not where I'm totally lacking them, but in a controlled manner. Um, I usually take other approaches first where I would maybe have them stand up, face the, face the corner of the wall, stand mm. there for like five minutes. But if they're still misbehaving after that or they're doing something really out of line, then at that time, I might spank them, but not with like full force aggression. So maybe what, that, what, I, what you're saying is that if you're standing in a Walmart and you do it in anger and you don't have control when you do it, you're showing, you're modeling a certain behavior that you have no control and you're doing it because you're, you're out of control as opposed to this is just sort of an effective way that I discipline calmly. Well first, of, well, first of all, if we were in a setting such as a Walmart and, and my kid did something really out of line, I, I remove my kid from the situation. Yeah, I, bring, I basically bring him in the corner I, I remove him outside and explain to him that's not appropriate behavior for <sighs> here. Lord have mercy. It's, but what, I'm sorry, but it, let's just be real. It's hard, okay? First of all, you're just happy that you even made it to the grocery store. You're happy that you're in there making a purchase. So the fact that you need to get dinner on the table, it's already 6.30 at night and you're in a grocery store, you're exhausted. And most people lose their frame of sure. patience by that point. And if your kid is like knocking down all the cereal boxes and doing all that stuff, I don't, I'm not saying it's acceptable to spank them at all in public because I think that it is very demeaning. But, I, but to take them and leave, I, I think that that is the best thing to do, but that is hard to do when you got to put dinner on And table. actually, you that frustrated. gives the kid more control in a weird way because then you're like, oh, we're not going to go grocery shopping. And then right. they've totally decided what you're going to do. Well, you right. Well, you, you're back to the playground. But you could just not bring them the next time. And I explain that if it's something that they like doing. But, but, then, but I, I don't have a choice. Don't like, have I a have to take them with me when I go. And my husband's always like, just take the boy, take the boy. And I'm like, are you kidding? I mean, I'm so much quicker without my son in a grocery store. Sure. My well, you son. You have to set boundaries. Yeah. Uh, but do, I mean, okay, sometimes... I have a two and a half year old. <laughs> Well, so we're, that's we're hard. in the grocery cart. <laughs> that's hard. And we're going to do. down the aisle, and there's a pretty girl passing by. And before <laughs> I know it, my son is like tapping her on the thigh, <laughs> and she turns and she says, "Oh, you're naughty." You know what does that mean? I mean, my son's like slapping on, you know, like. Okay. Oh no! Well, he so, doesn't know any no, better. Of course he though. doesn't. He's, he's so going... cute, and the girls don't mind it really. Sure. But the, the point is, is like when the kids cross that line of what is acceptable in the store. Yeah. You know, when they're throwing a tantrum in the middle of the well, store, you have to how remove do you them? them. So you, you need do? to remove them. I mean, but that, but you, is you that giving them the control that, you know, basically, okay, then we're not going to go to the party if you're going to throw the tantrum. Oh, I, so then you sit at home for five hours? No, no but you need to remove that. them from the situation and you have the time out. Once, so, once, they've, once they've created a scene in the grocery store, this is what, this is what I've, I've done in the past. You remove the child from the situation and you give them a time out where and I'm just bringing so I think I think you in can the find car. somewhere you bring sure. them or somewhere quiet in the store like if you can go all I the way would to remove the edge them of the, from like the, the store the deepest corner you can find 
and you chill out for four, you know for a couple of minutes and they can't move they can't talk to anybody you take away any toy that you brought in the store that's really the only way to do it because it is I don't think it's acceptable either to beat your kid ever let alone in the grocery store in the aisle so well, there needs to be consequences. Yeah, consequences. For, there needs to be consequences for their behavior. And if there are no consequences for their behavior, whether or not they think they're in control, they're probably too young to understand that. Yeah. But they, they need to know what is acceptable right. behavior and, consistent and what is not acceptable is behavior. So do you believe so, that you... Okay. But there was a lady who just got received a felony. That's crazy. For spanking her child. Now, I don't know if it was really bad spanking or a light spanking I mean, did she abuse her child? I I don't know. I just know that she received a felony or a big X in the state of California, if it was in California, and for spanking her kid. That's so interesting. So um, I teach at Laney College in Oakland, as do you, and... um, there, some of my students were actually brought something up. We were doing an interview, and you know they were joking around like, "Oh, you white people, you know, you're terrified of your kids." And they did this really embarrassing mm-hmm. imitation, and I had to completely be real. Wow, it is hu- it's totally embarrassing that we are looked at like, "Oh, we're negotiating, and we're and we're trying," you know, as a, it's a total stereotype and generalization, but still as a cultural thing that we've lost so much control in trying to avoid the spanking that we're basically, um, you know, letting them completely take, become monsters. And I'm wondering if there is legitimacy to just a good old fashioned spanking. A lot of the kids were saying, you know, my mom whooped me and I basically never ever again would throw those tantrums. I think that there's a, the kids today, they, they know that they're not supposed to be spanked, mm. and exactly. they know that their parents could get into trouble. Yeah. And I mean, but so in what some neighborhood? I mean, adolescents, I mean, they, they get out of hand, and you get sometimes so frustrated that you don't mean to spank yeah. them, but, but if, sometimes talk is just... Not, it's not right. Have we, have we lost control of our kids? Yes. The thing is, so. is time out, whether you're white or black or whatever, time out does work. The thing is, is that it's a certain kind of time out. It's like, come over here, I'm going to put you in the corner, and you're going to stand here until I tell you it is all right to move. Period. It's not the, oh, Billy, you know, I love you, I wish you wouldn't do this. That doesn't work. Mm. So, you know, it is an, an almost an enforced timeout, and then it's a consequence. You cannot go play. You have to sit here until I say you can you can move. And, you know, it's structure. It's structure, right? Not it's, only it's, that, kids want I feel structure. like they, if, you, if you do a timeout where it's not something that they enjoy, I think it works very effectively. Like, for instance, I had to tweak how I did a timeout. I would have my kids sit before, whereas they were totally fine with that but now mm. I make them stand and every yeah. time they try to sit no you have to stand and you have to face that corner yeah. and, I, and I would do it for the duration that needed to happen yeah. that's what we do too and we just have to be consistent so okay on that we got more to come more to come mm-hmm. but we got to go to commercial break we'll be right back